Welcome back, guys. We are here, another episode of Weddings Unedited. I am your host, Courtney Calton. And I'm Alicia Delia. Lovely little angel you. Oh. And today, we are talking about all of the 2022 wedding trends that we are predicting and getting getting into those. Yeah, getting into those. We did some research, so this isn't just something we're making up. Could be. You know, we will have our comments on them, but this is based on research on what wedding planners and florists and all all the vendors are talking about what they're seeing um, from, like I said, planning, florals, decor, Attire. outfits. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. So we're going to, we have a lot to cover today. It's a very extensive list, but there are some things on here that I am really into and very excited to see this year. Yeah, same, same. But before we even dive into that, um, I definitely wanted to make note that these are trends and they're just that they're trends doesn't necessarily that mean that you have to do anything in particular if you are someone who's getting married, and you are considering the details. (laughs) I am so sorry, but I just have to break in here with the freaking cat eating and crunching as loud as he possibly can. Maybe maybe you'll hear this, maybe not. He just really wanted to get in here. Yeah. We forced ourselves into his space right. to record this where he eats. So there's that. But, so there's that. But bringing it back, uh, reeling it back in once again, per the usual, yeah. is, um, you know, if you are getting married, this is just a reminder that you should do you. That whatever details you want to incorporate in your wedding day, do it. Like, don't don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Yeah, don't um, worry about what's on brand or trend for yeah. the year. Like, if you saw something six years ago and you want to do it at your wedding, do it. I'm here for it. Oh, so so am I. So we just want to have that little caveat put in there <laughs> before we dive in. Exactly. And before we dive into the trends, we would love to share our cocktail that we... <laughs> Today's made this cocktail. morning or this afternoon. It took a minute just because we did not have all the equipment necessary to make it all. But we, we made it happen. We had the ghetto version of making our cocktail today. <laughs> Mixed. We muddled in a bowl with a lime juicer. So that was <laughs> part of it. It was like a, a cocktail challenge. <laughs> like, can they make a drink with as few, like, ingredients and, uh, you know, I don't even know what you call this stuff cups things i don't know that <laughs> utensils, they utensils things. yeah basically it was like we made this beverage out in the woods <laughs> slash courtney's kitchen yes but today's cocktail is brought to us by actually um our friend tyler and he's actually the husband of a photographer friend of ours sarah kempers yes and we love her to death we love tyler so tyler sent us this recommendation it's called the gordon's breakfast cocktail it's a nice little little kick yes it's kind of i think it was supposed to be a play on a lighter version of a bloody mary like um it's definitely with with gin and cucumbers so it's like a fresher yeah it is spicy but it's, it's a little bit fresher we did make a simple syrup jalapeno infused i don't even know what yes yeah, it's, it's a jalapeno infused simple syrup and we mixed in um the gin the fresh lime juice one thing we did not add to it which is standard i guess for the drink is horseradish because the only grocery stores around here just had horseradish cream and that sounded terrible (laughs) (laughs) i am disturbed i just you know did not want to do that i felt like instead of adding that nonsense into it it's an aggressive yeah i just wanted to bring it back and we'll keep it simple so ours is um you know 86 horseradish but everything else and it's actually quite delicious so you can do it really spicy you can do it not as spicy i think we boiled the sugar water and jalapenos together there was two of them we cut them in half we muddled i would use air quotes muddled the cucumber and the jalapenos together it's very refreshing it's very light and cheers thank you tyler Yes. Thank you, ting. Tyler. Ting, ting. Ting, ting. And it's not breakfast. We're recording this in the afternoon, so it's just like a nice little... Yeah, our intention was, you know, breakfast cocktail and some donuts, but instead it's donuts and an afternoon cocktail. Yeah, we ate the donuts while we made the drink, yeah, which... Naturally. Never opposed to. I always, always want donuts. Mm. Absolutely. Ooh. It burns. <laughs> it burns so in, good. In the best way possible. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so... Let's do it. Let's dive, dive in to the trends um let's start with wedding 
just like day of trends <clears throat> or kind of m- just general, general wedding, wedding trends. trends. Yes. Mm-hmm. So the first trend you can expect to see this year is going to be weekday weddings. You mm-hmm. see a lot more of that. I feel like that came mostly from last year because of the pandemic. All We talked about this briefly in our last episode, just all rules are out the door at this point, which I am totally here for a long weekend wedding. I just don't like following rules in general, yeah. so I'm <laughs> all for it. Yeah, I think Rebel. it was just because a lot of the weekend days were already booked and with the amount of people getting wed- wedding married this year my drink is going to my head already <laughs> the gym, um, it's settling it's delicious um so yeah yeah i think just because the weekends being booked out weekdays were really all that was left for people even booking like six months ago i think like still being on top of it in the normal time frame um but <clears throat> yeah no at this point a lot of weekday events i, I believe yeah, is what we're going to be Monday seeing weddings i've seen Yeah, which is actually kind of nice because I think if venues are moving forward the way they normally do, weekdays are usually a bit cheaper uh, for venues than on weekends. But, of course, with this year being the year that it is, who knows? Can't speak for that. For everyone, yeah. (laughs) But generally speaking, that might be the idea. Um, And then, so the next thing, which I love, and we were talking about this, we have, like, just so you know, we're really proud of ourselves. Very proud. We have, like, this long, beautiful (laughs) list of, like, these large post-it notes with everything listed so we don't forget any of this and don't have to, like, look down at our phones constantly. Yeah, I'll put a picture up for everyone on our website so you can see, but... (laughs) We figured it'd be easier to know our bullet points and what we're talking about today versus trying to find it over and over again on my cell phone because that's you, your cell phone, you know, it shuts down. I can't remember where we were. So we're going to give this a whirl. So far, so it's good. Yeah. So multiple day experiences. So not just one day to celebrate your wedding, but basically if you have it over the weekend, it's a Friday through Sunday yeah, experience celebration. Yeah, absolutely. So depending on where you're at, if you're here in Colorado, it'd be like first nights gathering around a bonfire, doing like a s'mores night, hanging out, having food. The next day could going, be the wedding. Yeah, or going on a hike with everyone. Well, right. It makes like you yeah. don't have to do a certain order. You can do hikes. You can make a fun day experience with everybody. Do that. Then have the wedding the next day or have the wedding that second day and do a brunch the third day because every a lot of people will be in town celebrating. Yeah, so especially if people are coming into town, they want... To do something right they want to see your city or wherever you're having the wedding and make a vacation out of it instead of just a wedding and like hi thanks for coming see you later and <laughs> thanks for coming bye yeah. enjoy you a long time exactly which dives right into our next point point number three more destination weddings yes <laughs> totally love a good destination wedding but i think most people when you hear a destination wedding you think like, we're going to Mexico. We're going somewhere Which exotic. is great, yes. but it doesn't have to always be that way. It doesn't. It can literally be your destination wedding is in California, in Big Sur, and you live in Wisconsin, oh, and you God. just, like, want to uproot everyone and go to Big Sur, which is take us with you. I'm literally wearing a Carmel shirt oh, right hey, now from when I went convenient. to Carmel and visited Big Sur. Beautiful. Love it. Yeah. But yeah, I'm all for the destination weddings. Absolutely. No matter where it's at. Um, a lot of times vendors are willing to travel if, you know, you really wanted to, especially for like a photographer, a videographer, where a lot of us are very much open to traveling. It Don't take my word for it on everybody. It definitely depends person to person. But generally speaking, a lot of vendors, if you hire them and pay for them to travel to where you want to go, they'll go. Um, you know, so that definitely speaks to out of the country weddings. Yeah. That's usually the case too. <laughs> you know, it's harder to find maybe a vendor in a separate country, that, or if you're not trying to hire everyone in the, that one country, you can have one vendor come out that you really like. That was your dream vendor. Everyone else, yeah. you know, you can maybe hire a planner and you know a have them help you. Somebody in Italy and who have you know connections yeah but yes more destination weddings i'm all for and then the next thing we're we were going to talk about was curated guest lists for these weddings so i believe i don't know i didn't get to really research this too much but i feel like the guest counts for a lot of weddings this year might be a little bit less yeah i think people are starting to see the benefit in not necessarily a more intimate wedding but a smaller more Curated. Special, yeah, curated, curated guest list in the sense that, like, no offense to you, mom, but I don't need your 
friend from work coming to the wedding. your college friend who you haven't seen in 10 years. Yes, like doesn't need to come to the wedding if they've never met me and or my fiance. Mm -hmm. So I love that idea. I love that people are being more intentional with who's coming. I know that when Will and I got married, we decided that if we had not seen and or like talked to you in six to nine months before our wedding, then you were not coming. Oh, that's a good one. It was tough. There was definitely some upset family members, but at the end of the day, like some of those family members I hadn't even seen in three or four years, so no offense to them, but why would I have you come and celebrate my love? (laughs) Right, when you're not even really involved in my life. So curated guest lists are definitely becoming a thing, which I love. Yes, but also also, (laughs) the next part is is one of my favorites. Is this one of our favorites? Yes. So next trend for 2022 is more pet-friendly weddings. Yes. Oh, all the dogs all day, every day. I mean, even if you want to incorporate another animal, I feel like cats might be more difficult, but it's doable, I guess. My cat would not, Bear would not tolerate that. Although I really, I mean, Bear, I think would do. He would sit at the altar and he would crunch away on his fucking little kitty niblets. (laughs) And he would meow away. He would be the officiant, really, is what he would have been. That's what he he wants to be hired for. I think that with pet friendly weddings, more venues are going to start to allow them and in the sense that they're going to allow pets for the ceremony and or photos before the wedding and then they might ask that you take them home or have somebody bring them home for the reception which i totally think is a great way to incorporate your loved ones your fur Mm -hmm. babies yeah on your wedding day without feeling stressed that you need to like keep them from getting into trouble (laughs) <laughs> I like it. just keep them taken care of keep them getting in trouble but yeah. yeah and you know sometimes reception areas are outside if it's a venue that's very much an outdoor venue they might even allow your dog to wander around I mean it's very dependent yeah. on the venue itself but then if not obviously making sure you hire someone to come and get your animal and take care of them <laughs> be you the know. pet wrangler be the pet wrangler and actually there should be a pet wrangler there in general um, even if you designate just like a friend, yeah, just to help handle. That's usually what I do for sessions too. Anytime someone wants to bring a dog or any animal, and just ask that you bring someone with an extra pair of hands because unfortunately, the vendors yeah we can't do it are usually busy and you don't want to put that on like you know your guests when they're trying to enjoy themselves. I mean sometimes there's like someone who has a special bond with your animal. Maybe they do want to do that. <laughs> I mean you never know that that could be an option. I would be honored if somebody would ask me to do that at their wedding. You can hire me now to come wrangle your pets at your wedding if I'm not doing photo or video. There we go. Yeah. Courtney's up for the job. Emails. I'll put in the show notes. <laughs> Contact uh, today. Yeah. So <laughs> so the next one is the less traditional wedding parties. So this means there's no specific wedding party. They're not going to be standing up at the altar with the couple that they're actually – they're. I want to say, I don't even want to say like they're more special than any other guests, but it's a little bit more coordinated in a sense where like maybe you, these would have been the people you would have had in your wedding party. And you just ask that maybe they wear color coordinated, like color range as opposed to everyone, you know, spending all the money to do all the different things. Cause we all know it's expensive being in a wedding, not being the couple is just, it's still expensive. Yeah. So it's, it kind of goes both ways. I think it's less stress on the couple planning for the day it's also less stress for friends who want to be somewhat involved but maybe maybe just financially can't afford to be in a wedding party so this is kind of like a nice little in between i think it's i think it's really cool to do yeah, something like I that i had a wedding last year and they did it and i thought it was adorable the bride asked everyone to get a dress in like a blue a bluish purple color but left it wide open to whatever they wanted and then all those girls still got ready together with the bride. Well, right. They can still be incorporated. Yeah. It's just they're literally not standing up there Yeah, with they them. weren't standing up there. We didn't do an extensive bridal party photo mm-hmm. session with the bride and the bridesmaids. And it just, it almost just seemed a little more special for the bride and groom to not have to worry about... Everyone else. Their gaggle, yeah. <laughs> They're drunk and friends. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you guys wouldn't be well prepared well, and I mean, behaved. But right. I mean, we're I sitting wouldn't. here drinking alcohol, so we're not really ones to say. So yeah. don't invite us to be in your wedding party because yeah. we will be those drunken ones. Yes, That'll be like my excuse to not be in a wedding party. <laughs> I'll be too drunk. Don't ask me. And that's because that's something I recommend to couples is to lay low on the, the alcohol drinking Until at least later. before yeah. like the 
traditional group photos yeah. and stuff. After that, free free for all. You do you. Yeah. Do whatever you Pass want. Pass out on the street if you want. I mean, I have worked a wedding where a bridesmaid passed out <laughs> during cocktail hour at the reception because we took a party bus from the ceremony to the reception space, which is like a 40-minute drive. Of course it is. Chugging just bottles. I want to say that I'm fully supported this decision. I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't <laughs> pushing them to do it, but I also was like, here we are. We're having a good time. That's what it's all about. But she definitely took a nice little cat nap. We just got to the venue after we took photos. She Poor passed thing. out. And then she woke up and was dancing. So She got her second wind. Yeah, if it was me, I would have just been dead the rest of the night. I did have a the wedding that I shot for you a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Which, um, thank God for this one. Because I did catch COVID. It found me eventually. <laughs> The day it <laughs> no, um, unfortunately, uh, found me after all this time being 2022 now, and it was the day before I had to shoot a wedding, and I tested positive. And hey, yo. yeah, when you work for yourself, you know, a lot of times you try to have some backup options so that you know, God forbid, something like that does happen. I'm very lucky that Courtney was able to step in. Always, always and forever. And be my associate photographer that day. But yeah. That poor little... couple, they also hired a videographer who came down with COVID. And had a replacement. And had oh. to have a replacement, but... That's like a, maybe a trend for 2022. Yeah, is just know that this might be... Associate, <laughs> like, so- vendors. Yeah. Vendors, videographers, sure. Any of photographers, it, yes. people filling in day of because you know, trying to keep everyone safe. <laughs> and healthy. <laughs> and healthy. So maybe, again, that might be a trend. Yeah. I, well, it's <laughs> replacement. <that> <laughs> it's not on there. We just um, added it. Well, I, I got to talk to the videographer that they had hired, and he told me that he shot a wedding on uh, New Year's Eve, and the groom drank so much that before the ceremony even started, they had he had thrown up on himself, and they had to take his suit off and he had to wear one of the groomsmen's suits (laughs) that wasn't vomited on and they had to put him in a shower beforehand like in the hotel to like sober him up and like all right we got to get you down the aisle wow needless to say the bride was not happy less than enthusiastic the rest of the evening so alcohol consumption really should be it needs limited to, to some extent. Yeah, it needs to just be paste. Yeah, paste is definitely the yeah. right word. Limited paste, all of the above. Uh, that leads us to our next trend, mm-hmm. which is a fun new one that I am definitely here for. Yeah. It is the share a flavor experience, we're calling it, which just basically means more curated, immersive food for your guests. So that might be a champagne wall which we've all seen, or a champagne tower, yeah. or... Champagne towers apparently are coming back. Yeah, definitely love that it's, idea. I love it, but side note, I think I was also having a conversation <laughs> with another photographer. It could be dangerous. So really, yeah, it's, having this fully, like, coordinated and planned out and maybe, like, test for runs... for the and groom, I feel like it should... Like, a fun photo of them pouring into the tower... And then let the staff serve you the rest of them. Let the staff handle the best. Yeah. But it also is, we were talking about another catering company where they set up different bookshelves almost and put specific things on there, like hors Mm d'oeuvres that aren't necessarily handed out or passed around, but they're more of an art appeal. So it's something visually to look at yeah like visually it, it brings in all the senses like tasting the smell the visual it's not just someone going around and serving hors d'oeuvres there's nothing wrong with but you know putting it out in a sense of making it as like a part of Your the decor. experience and the decor i yeah. think is really cool um i think people are becoming a little bit more aware of of that just like incorporating it into their day it's def- definitely adds something more to the wedding day oh yeah Versus just showing up and waiting for food to be served. Because food can be pretty. I want to tell you something. It really can. When Working I these weddings. It. <laughs> it's it's a double whammy when it's delicious and it looks good. Because then you also feel bad about eating it because it looks so good. I don't know about you, but that doesn't I stop me from eating it. I feel bad for about four it. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad as I'm ruining it and then it yeah. goes into my mouth oh, and I'm like, this, this was, was so worth so it. pretty. Yeah. She's a T-Rex over here. <laughs> <laughs> the little, I got a little, was it tiny? I got this big head and, and tiny arms. Tiny arms. 
exactly. Just being T-Rexes eating all the food. Um, <clears throat> so still diving into sort of the food and beverage portion of it is the uh, appearance of more non-alcoholic mocktail options. Because as we all know, not everyone drinks alcohol, especially if you're going to have anyone showing up that's underage, um, but that maybe wants to be more included instead of just having a Shirley Temple or a <laughs> random soda. soda. Yeah, you know, it's just like a nice little fun way to add like an extra little fun drink that looks good and, you know, more options for more people or maybe just someone who doesn't, who chooses not to drink alcohol, which is totally fine, you know. That's their choice and as it should be. But it also brings up the fact, like side note, you know, having a dry wedding is something that we don't see too often. Um, <laughs> I don't want to say it's not something I don't recommend, Um, this is just like one of those subjects that's sort of a little bit taboo that people don't really talk about too much right now. I do know of the dry weddings that I've shot. I think I've only shot like two in my entire career. Yeah, I don't know that I ever have. Yeah. It's, the, the vibe is a lot different. It is. Um, it's a little bit more mellow. It's a little bit more laid back. There's not as many people getting on the dance floor. It's a lot shorter. Yeah. Um, you know, so there's there's positives and negatives to it. Um, but I do think, you know, if it's like a couple who's understandably so chooses not to drink alcohol, that's fine. But still considering your guests and what their lifestyles are, that's something to take into consideration, I think. Because yeah. we were talking about this where, you know, if someone shows up to a dry wedding, you can literally straight turn around, go out, <laughs> dry, drive and buy a bottle of liquor somewhere, I'm going to the fill liquor up a store. couple of flasks, yeah. bring them to the wedding. Like I'm people will literally go wedding. out of the way yeah. to go and get their alcohol if they can't <clears throat> have it um, because you go to a party and usually people expect alcohol. So right. if you do have a dry wedding and that's something you're planning for, there's never any judgment on our end, nope. but we do recommend you notify your guests on your save the dates or invitations that this is going to be a dry wedding because I do think sort of just blindsiding them not having it as an option for people when they show up sort of is a shell shocker um you know again it's one of those things where like it's not being judgmental on our end it's just basically what we've seen yeah and we just think that people want to go to your wedding and celebrate with you and enjoy their time have a night out yeah have a night out and sometimes even like a glass of champagne or something like just something to let loose a little bit because I mean, I don't know too many people who have been that sober on the dance floor who've really gotten down, unless they're like professional dancers. Like, obviously, you want to be sober for that. But that's not everybody. It's It's like very little. Yeah. (laughs) Very little. Very little. Yeah. Next trend for 2022 is I think this one might actually be my favorite one on here. Mm. It's such a, a random one, but special and themed weddings. So when I think of a theme wedding, right, you're probably thinking of something outrageous in like a chicken costume, but that's not at all what the trend is. To each his own. Yeah, if that's what you want to do. It's actually seeing a theme for your wedding. So it might be maybe old Hollywood or masquerade or something like that. Just that brings a different elevated aspect to your day. I would love to go to an old Hollywood wedding. I think the styles that people would wear would be so gorgeous. Oh, that would be Your amazing. Your hair and just everything. I Will and I did shoot a wedding last year that was masquerade, and it was so cool. And what they did is everyone, you know, dressed normal wedding guest attire. But then at 9 o'clock, the DJ made an announcement, go ahead and put your costumes on, whatever that might have been, and people had just very wild feathered headdresses and bedazzled masks and oh so fun it was so pretty so So fun you're seeing a lot more of that this year which i think could be sort of bringing it back to like the destination weddings if you did go somewhere that has like a really great like cultural influence and like the city that you're getting married and the country you can incorporate something from the culture into that like however that looks wherever you go yeah like like it's pinatas yeah really bright colored I don't even know their dresses are so epic, but oh yeah, no, I, exactly. Yeah. And having dancers come in and and Ooh, yes. doing all that, which actually does bring us to the next thing, which is specialty vendors and entertainment. So it co- like kind of just wraps in with each other, but yeah, it kind of just you know bringing in some of the extra activities that people could possibly do, um, like we were just saying, dancers, or you can have live paintings. That's becoming definitely a thing I've oh, seen that people really thing. love. Um, 
beer burrows with the donkeys and them carrying the, the satchels <laughs> and their and yeah all the things i think that's really cute anything with animals again i'm yeah. all for uh, but like live <laughs> pairings you can have a sommelier come and help you pair wine or if you have someone who's really experienced with beer like if you're in colorado and you wanted to have someone i don't i mean like a tasting yeah like some sort of tasting from a specific brewery like that could be really cool if they have a lot of options but even like axe throwing which is kind of intense i don't know if yeah. i would do that personally because i don't just i don't trust they myself the rubber but, ones okay yeah safety okay, first yeah safety first seriously yeah. but like beer pong bouncy castles like all the extra things that i think would be so fun to incorporate you obviously need to have this planned out um accordingly so you have enough time for all of this and so that everyone can thoroughly enjoy the experience but with that aside i think all together like that kind of stuff is so cool yeah so different so different and it makes it more than a wedding right well we were saying with like the beer pong you photographed i did a cute little elopement in breckenridge and the bride and groom made a custom beer pong table and they set it up in the garage so that the guys could play beer pong while the girls got ready yeah, i think that's so cool because it really makes it about them too it when does. they enjoy Just doing what together they the photos were amazing because the groom was wearing a tuxedo. Right, but playing beer pong. Playing beer pong, yeah. I was like, this, why is this not at every wedding? <laughs> <laughs> right. Should be. Or it could be champagne pong or yeah, whatever well, that's beverage. Classy. That's well, yeah, a little bit more dangerous too. You have but to have your pinkies up for that one. <sighs> It'd be a lot of burping involved. <laughs> Carbonation in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Next trend, which we do want to do a side note on, we're probably going to do a full episode on this mm-hmm. because it is something that is becoming so big it's blowing up for sure it is blowing up is having a like tiktoks and social media moment so it's essentially someone that you either hire or that your videographer hires or your photographer to come and capture behind the scenes day of footage and create reels for you and create tiktoks for you and create just like content for you to have that very moment of your wedding day instead of waiting for all of those wedding photos and your wedding videos and I never would have thought of this. I, I'm not surprised, I'm I want to say, either, but, but I, I, I agree. So like social shooters, what yeah, we were seeing. Yeah, social shooter, yes. So literally like, ha, air quotes, <laughs> yeah. hiring someone to come and show up and be that person to get the behind the scenes stuff, which I, I think is great. Yeah. I mean, it, well, you know, I don't know how much they charge. I literally have no idea. Yeah, we need to, if, we then need we'll to find somebody. We'll talk more about that, but we'll look, we'll do our research and figure out more about that. But apparently that is going to be a thing this year. Yeah, well, you see just the short little reels of... Mm-hmm. You know, funny things that people are doing, like 10 out of 10 recommend musical chairs at your wedding. And then somebody oh, creates, I saw that. That was yeah, fun. like a really cute, just short little video. So it's somebody that is coming to do exactly that. Just create your content right away because we yeah. don't necessarily have that and it's, ability. Yeah, it's not, pro- I mean, I want to say not professional, but you know, recorded on your, on the phone. On the phone so yeah. it's, it's not a super like 4K or whatever yeah. HD video. I'm not too familiar with all that, but <laughs> <laughs> you're doing great. You're doing great. Um, but yeah, so that's interesting, but we'll definitely dive into that at some point. Yeah. If somebody does that for a living and, or they know someone that does or done it. Yeah. Reach out to us so we can pick your brain on this. Cause I have a lot of questions. Yeah. Very interested in learning more. Um, and then, so the next, uh, last thing we were going to talk about overall for weddings is that there's going to be less traditions. So, you know, like the cake cutting, um, the toast, the, bouquet throwing like all of that stuff yeah all of those random things thrown in there that have been done for so long are kind of just being nixed um (laughs) and not to say that some of them shouldn't be included what are you know again do what you want to do if something you're really interested in doing um but yeah just kind of seeing less of them right so with like toast and then we don't want to say like toast should be completely like nix that's not what we were trying to say it's more so they are now being done a lot of times at the rehearsal dinner at the welcome dinner with like whatever the night before is with the closer group of friends and family that you probably have invited usually it's not 100 percent of everyone that's going to be attending the wedding unless it's a destination wedding that might look a little bit different but um But generally speaking, doing the toast ahead of time, especially we were saying like toast, trying to keep it to like two or three minutes on a wedding day is somewhat important, you know, diving into like, um, what is it we were saying? Your inside jokes. Inside jokes. It's great for the bride and groom, but the rest of your guests, they have no idea what they're being 
talked about or what's going on? I mean, I unfortunately have been at weddings where toast went on for longer than five minutes and guests started sort of just getting antsy and started yeah. talking. And, you know, you don't want to be rude and tell them to be quiet. So you're just kind of sitting there awkwardly as a vendor, like, okay, well, this person's talking and all these people are not paying attention. So telling the DJ to cut the mic. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> limiting that in general is great. But then also now they're being incorporated into different a different time for the, the wedding experience to happen. So I think, um, yeah. And actually I think there's maybe we can I don't know we're gonna dive into this too but something maybe that's not gonna really happen as much anymore is like family style oh yeah dinners Dinners. being all put on the table being made a mess of stuff maybe salads some salads would be salads and bread yeah that kind of stuff you just pick at but like the main courses and stuff maybe seeing less of as well yeah no I I I don't know that I've ever actually gone to a wedding that was family style I could see a lot of issues with that (laughs) I think I've done, I feel like I've done one. It's really hard to remember specifics yeah. from all the years, but I feel like I have done one. And it, I don't know if it makes more sense financially to do that. Um, obviously, like planners know and caterers, obviously, for sure, know more about that specific yeah. information. I don't know if it's just like a cheaper option or something for people, but apparently it's just becoming less common. That's fine. Good riddance. I mean, I don't mind it at home when it's... Yeah. It's you and Byron. Do you consider that family style? <laughs> that is our family. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, can you pass the ravioli? <laughs> oh, my God. Let me tell you something. Byron does not like ravioli. At least not what? in the sense of, like, it needs to have, like, meat in it. He can't just do, like, pasta and cheese. He like has to cheese. have, like, a protein. Yeah. He, we That's got fun. fed pasta or ravioli, just cheese ravioli at a wedding one time. Did he cry? He literally was like throwing a hissy fit towards the end <laughs> of the night because he was just so hungry still. He's, he's like a man beast who's just yeah. constantly eating as he works out Need a lot. So he's protein. just burning calories constantly even when he's not doing anything. So I get it, but yeah. it's like... Well, then I won't be taking him to my favorite <laughs> Italian restaurant where they serve us vodka ravioli. Oh, that sounds wonderful. No, and I'm a fan out. of it, you but can come. He, he just needs like Buy meat out. or something <laughs> else on the side. Like it was, And it was like, I think when they served us at that wedding, it was like four or five like medium-sized raviolis. It wasn't a lot. Like, I, it wasn't uh, even a lot for me. I was still kind of hungry myself. I would yeah. still be hungry from that. Yeah, exactly. So he was yeah. not too happy about that. And then driving home like two and a half hours in the rain. He's like, we're going to stop at McDonald's. You know, he passed out because he was just, I think, so tired because he didn't have enough energy. He just fell asleep. Yeah. So he fell asleep and it was fine. <laughs> we made it work. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah, no. Well, uh, next on the list for trends is going to be wedding attire. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So to start it off, we are going to be seeing this year, which I also think is going to trickle in more next year, but bold colors and just like bold wedding dresses in general. Mm-hmm. So I saw one today that her dress is lace and it's black and white. Well, I guess black and like a nude. Okay. So pretty, just like very florally lacy and mm. just very over the top wedding dresses. So you're not going to see that sleek, just plain. plain. Yeah, things are not gonna... plain, but simple. Yeah, I simple. They're, well, plain mm, since there's nothing on it. It's just mm-hmm. like might just be silk or something. Um, yeah, but, but yeah. like floral prints. I think I just recently saw a wedding that was posted about not too long ago at a venue back in Florida that I love, and the bride was wearing this beautiful dress, and it had printed floral all over it, and it was just it was done in such a great way. It wasn't like overwhelming, but it was still unique, just like feminine and subtle. And yeah, like, and it can be that. whatever exactly. It can be whatever you want it to be, and I think so. Because I mean, you and I have not watched the show, but apparently there's the Bridgerton effect that's happening. <laughs> With 2022 weddings overall, but um, for what we're going to be talking about specifically right now is with um, dresses. There's a lot of corset dresses that are happening. And not to say that that hasn't happened before, but more or less the corsets are being shown. They're not just hidden underneath to create that effect. It's actually, there's not too much material on top of it. It's just being exposed, the ribs, the the lacing, like the tying of everything, like the details that go into it. I think it's definitely being more exposed, which I think is beautiful yeah it brings your waist in which girls let's be honest we all want that <laughs> well i'm saying so it's been incorporated before but now it's just it's not being hidden like women are showing it off and yeah. that's great i think that's well, that's really definitely nice look more wedding dresses are becoming more of a statement piece mm-hmm. 
very over the top and i love it in the best way possible we're also seeing a lot of big puffy sleeves oh, this year which give me a really good puffy I sleeve know. if you go on my pinterest board it's like all puffy sleeves right now i'm just apparently need to get married again <laughs> because i'm loving this and listen that's actually something i think that maybe we missed because i don't think i wrote it down but like and of what is it called i had it written down on that list which i like i said i forgot maybe to mention oh yeah the anniceptions like anniversary reception celebrations so like people oh. who've gotten married and they did like an elopement or something and then now they want to like renew okay. their vows or whatever they want to like do it kind of like with everyone so it's like an anniversary and now that they can have a larger gathering bring people in and enjoy wear it together. Wear a new dress. You know, wear a new dress wear with our puffy sleeves. But like sleeves in general are coming back as well. I mean, they've been coming back. Um, we were talking about with Kate Middleton's wedding. Apparently, when I was doing research, this was something that has been brought back because of that wedding happening with her beautiful long sleeve dress. Um, it sort of inspired a lot of dress makers to and designers to bring them back in because they were big in like the 80s. Like totally. The puffy sleeve, all that stuff was big. The now it's coming back. The sleeve that like went down on your, and on your finger. finger. I think my yes. mom. I think Susan. Totally. Susan, you definitely did. I know Susan you did. did. <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> feel it in my core. Yeah. She even showed me her dress not too long ago when we went to go visit. And it's like so cute. Kind of looked a little moldy, but like, you know. <laughs> Still cute. It's been a while. Yeah. Um. The big puffy sleeves are, a lot of them are um, like removable. So if you wanted... To right. add them on to your dress for just the ceremony and then take them off for the reception or vice versa. I There are so many epic ones out there right now. I There's just... So many. I Which, love the sleeve look. I actually... I don't even know if this isn't something I had written down or I saw, but I would hope that it can become a trend is more um, veil capes. <gasps> Veil capes are just, there's something about them. I had um, an intimate statement. wedding this past last year that was beautiful. And um, yeah, I don't, I'm all for that. I don't know. Yeah. Something about like empowerment with like wearing this veil cape thing. Well, that goes great with the Bridgerton and then, <laughs> right. or, you know, if you're a bride that doesn't necessarily want to wear a veil, a cape might be a great alternative for so, something. Like still, your hair loose. So you yeah. still want to show off your hair do a little bit more Flowy and not have it covered. And totally, totally we need to see those. It's not officially maybe a trend, but we want it to be. Yeah. So <laughs> we're just manifesting this at yes. this point. Um, but then even the two piece um, like dresses yes. or like a jumpsuit. jumpsuit. Yeah, mixing it up. Because even with the dresses, uh, when you just like two piece, if you, you can mix it up and you can do like a long version for the ceremony, short version for the reception. Phew, I never thought of that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, generally just when we were doing this research and I saw that, I was like, that's where my mind went with yeah. that. Um, then they didn't go into too much detail, but did like even do like a corset top and, you know, do something else below. Yeah. Under, un, not underneath, but below. Um, or like, you know, like I said, jumpsuit, which I was also Always telling you, you can here. even add an attachment to the bottom where it's sort of like an open, I don't even know what you call it. I'm not an expert in the fashion world, but <laughs> you, uh, someone cape, can let me know what it's called. But for your bottom. <laughs> so yeah, so it's like an attachable, like partial dress where it's sort of like open in the front. So you still know, or you make it be close to you. But because there's a lot of material like going on underneath, slit. but like a slit or an opening in the front and it like drapes in the back. I mean, there are just, I think I love the fact that just in general, there's a lot of options for people now. Yeah. Yeah. And especially if you're someone who is a woman who doesn't like to wear dresses, then I think jumpsuit is like such a great option. Totally. I love a good jumpsuit. So elegant and sophisticated and... But I've only seen so one bride good. ever pull out a jumpsuit at her reception, and I nearly fainted because it was so gorgeous. And honestly, it just makes life a lot easier, too. Yeah, you got more room for activities. You can twirl. <laughs> <laughs> so much. So many things you can do now with the jumpsuit yeah. compared to a dress. Less <laughs> offensive things happening there. <laughs> it's easier to go to the bathroom by yourself. I mean, depending if a zipper starts at the top. That's true. If that's like the case, onesie, that would be dangerous. But then the other thing we were going to say for Final, this other one. Yes, is pearls. Yeah, pearls on pearls a lot of things. are in for 2022. Pearls, literally, like Alicia just said, are on everything. Pearls on your shoes. Pearls on your veil. Pearls on your ears. like Pearls on the hair ties. Yes. Anything, any like little detail that you, know, you want incorporated with pearls. Do all things pearls. The dress itself. Big fan of the pearls right now. Love them. The heels that kind of tie like a big giant bow mm. with pearls on them. I think bows in general too are also yes. coming back as well. So yeah. it'll be a good combo. 
I'm not a loss for words. I'm literally just like, I'm just pearls. Oh my God. Pearls. It's so pretty. Give us more pearls. Pearls and bells. Pearls. <laughs> and then we're going to dive into, there's a couple more like subjects or uh, yes, categories. Categories. We've broken this down the best we could so that you guys could understand what the hell we are talking about. So we're not all over the place. Yeah. This is how my mind works. Yeah. Next normally. category is going to be florals and decor. I Did I spell decor without a C? Yeah. Dior. Dior. Wonderful. We are talking florals and Dior today. I was just drunk on donuts when I was making this list. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. I can still read it. Yeah, we knew who I meant. The rest looks good. <laughs> the first trend you can expect to see is more hanging florals. Yes. Which is a very unique idea. I love it. I, I know, know it's... Okay, so first off, and when we bring on florist, I'm sure we'll have this conversation with them, but I'd imagine they are very labor intensive oh, God. so when you incorporate um you know this idea into your plans just know that you are paying for that time for it to be set up so it's not exactly the cheapest way to decorate um the space but i think they're so beautiful i think it Boy, just adds it texture color you know so the next thing that was on the list were dried florals and i think that's a very popular one to do with the hanging florals yeah um, so they're not like wilting and falling off. And I mean, in my mind, that's where that goes. Yeah. It, it's pretty accurate. I watched a video of someone, how they did a hanging floral arrangement. Oh. And most of them were dried, but yeah. some of them were still alive. But they just put them in. And in the combo mesh. of that is beautiful, too. Yeah. Oh, totally. Oh, I love that's a combo another dried thing and fresh. There, isn't it? What? Combo. Combo <sighs> flowers. I don't know. I it don't should know. be now. Shit's Shit's falling off. <laughs> um, anyway, hanging florals. I've seen entire ceilings covered oh in baby's God. breath, which I can't imagine how long that took that florist. But boy, was it gorgeous. A huge team of people yeah. doing a lot of work, but I'm sure it was beautiful, which, yeah. The more intricate, the more detail-oriented that stuff is, the you know, the more labor intensive it's going to be at the end of the day, more expensive, you know, depending on your, your budget and whatnot. And you could do something, I'm sure, maybe more simple. It doesn't yeah. have to be the entire wall. It could just be over um, the couple's head table. table. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be the whole. Yeah. So there's, I feel like there's a lot of options and especially depending on the venue as well. Yes. And what, what they allow. How and high up is the ceiling? <laughs> right. The, there's a lot that goes yeah. into that. Do you have a ladder for me? Yes. A ladder is necessary. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is also leading us in, there it is, color clashing. Ah. That's what I was going for. We are seeing this year lots of bold color palettes. Yes. So that is fair game for any and all colors together. The brighter, the better. I'm not seeing so many mo monochromatic color schemes anymore. They're still definitely here. The all white, the all beiges, but you're seeing just really bold almost neon coloring yeah they're Lots coming pastels mm -hmm. the, the brightness is coming back yeah the 80s i feel like the 80s in general just like yeah inching it's like that totally. decade is coming back but but in a, a classier way yeah. a classy feminine <laughs> maybe way, a little bit will. more planned out i feel like planners designers you know these these people who this is their job they have a the best idea of what can work together you throw this stuff at me and i would be like i have no fucking clue what colors look good together even if they're opposite colors and they would look good together i'd have no idea but <laughs> um you know but i think it's it's a great trend to, to come in i mean greenery is here to stay you are still going to see a lot of that um which goes into the next thing which is you know having a lot more green sustainable you know pieces in general a lot of centerpieces and all that kind of stuff um which i think is great you know it's like a really simple way to decorate your your tables especially if you don't really want to go too all out on like the longer tables or whatever however you have the table set up for your guests you know if you want to do like an elaborate thing for the head table the sweetheart table and then kind of like wind it down a little bit for everyone else because honestly if you're for me if i'm a guest at a wedding which hasn't happened in a while <laughs> Alicia I do have wedding. friends. I just feel she like it's no just friends. honestly my friends know. I think my most recent friend who got married was like, sorry, you know, we just we're not as close anymore. And like we were best <laughs> friends like a while ago, like back in middle school. And I, we still keep in contact, but it's definitely not as much these days. Yeah. So when she was like, I'm sorry, I didn't include you, but I included these people. I'm like, girl. Not I don't offended. even care. Yeah. If anything, I'm thankful. <laughs> yeah, that I didn't have to go and pretend. <sighs> it's just a lot. So anyways, um, again, reeling it back in. 
with these pieces, you know, if they're kind of like elaborate and you and you want to have a conversation across the table with someone, then they're like all up in your way and you're literally like dodging left and right to like talk to people. <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, we were just dodging each other. <laughs> like we're in sync. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, but so the thing is, is so this kind of doubles as maybe like a wedding gift where I've seen ideas come in where people are doing sort of super sustainable things that are like house plants and they are in their pots. And so you encourage your guests at the end of the wedding to take a plant home with them. So it ends up actually being a gift as well for them because we were saying it was a lot of times, you know, florals are not cheap. Let's just throw that out there. And for good reason. That's We're not saying that like as a bad thing. We're saying it as absolutely 100% worth it. Yes. Um, but with that said, a lot of times, you know, these what beautiful florals at the end of the day, what are you going to do with a lot of them? So sometimes you'll see like the mother of the bride trying to hand out the flowers. Sometimes Table I've taken pieces. some flowers home, which I'm so grateful for. Me but too. I'm like, yeah, I'll take however many you want me to. But at least house plants and stuff like that, where if it's more sustainable, you can actually have it growing in your house and keep it alive. And it's not just, you know, like a wasteful thing to like have them, you know, in your house and then, and then they're dead and you throw yeah. them out. Or, or if you're a bride and you want to get things like, what is that called? And oh, the, the pressed or... You know, impressed. Or yeah. you can have it in the, like acrylic, yeah. clear stuff. I don't, I mean, there's people on Etsy who stuff. do that kind of stuff, which is actually really cool. Um, like, you do no. that koozies um what are the coasters and i don't know just really cool things you can Paper do with weights. the flowers afterwards yeah no i as a, a uh, self-proclaimed plant mom yes yes i am definitely here for anyone that wants to decorate their wedding using indoor house plants and then gift it to me at the end of the night and it, and it helps clean up process yeah, helps like to up. be honest it's, it's healthy, a full circle thing. sustainable like you were saying also Let's be honest, 90% of people, if you have a favor at your wedding that you want people to take at the end of the night, 90% of the people are not going to remember to take it. Well, remember or even see them. See them, yeah. It doesn't even if you strategically place them on a table that they're most likely going to walk by. Yeah, it gets missed a lot of times. So if it was a plant on, on the middle of the, the table, table where they're sitting at. Yeah, that's like, please take me home. Give me a home. I'm, I'm. I want your love. Filling my pockets. You know yeah. that I'm gonna wheel out. Like, <laughs> just bring a wagon. Yeah. You know, I'm like I and this one, and I've been wanting this one and this one. Yeah. <laughs> I love that idea. I think that would be a very pretty. I'd love to see more of that. Yeah. Hopefully, that is definitely a bigger trend this year. It's something that I saw. Hopefully, like being brought out there into the world as a trend. People being more aware of being sustainable. So yeah. I'm hoping that will be something we see more often. We are also going to see this year a lot more vintage decor, mm -hmm. vintage furniture, um, a lot more of the furniture kind of lounge setup areas. Which there's so many great rental companies, you know, you can go through and see their inventory and they usually have a plethora. <laughs> great word choice. <laughs> yes. I think we had it in one of the other episodes. I just want to bring that back. Yeah. Plethora of options, but I think it's great. Then also gold and metal tones for the weddings coming up. Um, you know, bring that back to like the color palette thing, you know, go, like mono, monochromatic, uh, you know, wedding color themes. And so if you're going like white and gold, white and black, or, you know, all that kind of stuff, I think that would look really cool too. Yeah, gold and just metal in general just elevates something. I mean, it's so even easy. being, so, and actually something that I, <laughs> something I didn't think of, I actually think, I don't know if I wrote that down or not, uh, but in general with being more sustainable, but kind of bring it back to both things where it could be uh, like gold, metal, like save the date type stuff, invitation things. But if you want to be sustainable, just sending out um, online save the dates, oh, yeah. you know, saving that, just maybe just doing an invitation, saving on paper, doing paperless. I love a paperless invitation. I love a paperless save the date. Because more often than not, it's going to get on the fridge and get lost. I mean, I get the fact that people want something in their hands sometimes. Yeah. Um, but, at, I mean, at the same time, just like we were saying, being sustainable, I think it could be a very wasteful industry and event. So, you know, doing your part to have less of a footprint on the world, I think that would be really great. Um, yeah, sorry. I'm like one no, off on I'm, that. I'm I just getting reminders of like what I've yeah. seen out there. No, that's a great point. Um, that takes us into... Food Ooh. and cake. Mm. Mm. <laughs> cake. Mm. The last category, mm. the best for Donuts. last. Yum. Yeah, so we are going to be seeing cake arches. Yeah, which I think I saw was more like decor, not for like 
You could, I mean, maybe make use of an arch. You can decorate it to look beautiful. Or it could just sort of be like a staple, like decor piece to like center around the cake to make it more noticeable. Yeah. So it's kind of staggered, right? Up in different levels. It's almost taking cakes and making them artwork or not even just cake. Because cakes pretty much a lot of times are. Yeah. But it's just making it a larger statement piece instead of just having... Just the cake. Just the cake sitting there and then, you know... Even if you don't have like... Even if it is like just a cake, sometimes people incorporate other desserts around the cake when they have yeah, their table cupcakes. set up, cupcakes, donuts, yeah. all that stuff. But if it's just the cake, then having this arch and having maybe some florals or whatever added to it, I think could really emphasize like just that even more, I think would look so, so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely just more of a statement dessert table. So we all love a good dessert table. Yeah. A wedding I just did for you. They had a cream puff tower, which I had never seen. But it was very epic. It was literally... It's huge, it looked like. Yeah, it was probably three feet. It looked like a little tiny Christmas, Christmas tree. tree. Yeah. Which is perfect was... timing, because their wedding was like two days out. It was right. j- January 2nd. Yeah, totally holiday yeah. wedding. But they had an entire mini tree, we'll call it, made out of cream puffs, which I'd never seen at a wedding. Which also, side note, be careful with those. <laughs> <laughs> careful when biting into a cream puff explosions may happen Caution. so especially if you end up even if it's not full of cream and it's full of like jelly i don't even know if you call it a donut oh, at that gosh. point but like if you got it on your dress or something like yeah, wear, neutral colored wear a bib <laughs> when you eat those i feel like i need to wear a bib dress. constantly when i eat anything <laughs> yeah. anyways especially maybe it's part of the reason why i didn't do a full-on wedding myself you weren't to be didn't wear a dress because yeah. i just don't trust myself which is why i mostly wear just dark black colors today is a very different kind of day we're okay, right so we're mustard and ketchup today <laughs> Which I hate mustard. What? I, I do. Mustard in a pretzel? That's like a I, staple in life. The only time I will eat mustard if it's on a Cuban sandwich. Mm. I, can, I can appreciate that. I feel like because it just incorporates it so well. But yeah. um, but bringing Opposite. that back to the... Right, <laughs> yes. But bringing it back to the cakes is now we are seeing a lot more um, couples cakes, smaller cakes for... Even if it's not just for cutting, just to have out for the couple. Um, so the less intricate, less tall, obviously it might just be like a one tier looking type of cake. It'd be super. And I think that when you do something like that, it'd be kind of nice to incorporate a lot of detail onto that. And then you can, I don't know, maybe save my, I don't know that part about saving money, but having some sort of like larger cake or sheet cake or something in the back for the caterer to like cut up and bring out to gas as opposed to like lugging in this large cake. Um, and trying to intricately cut it without ruining maybe the top tier if like the couple wanted to save that yeah, one for save it. yeah. This is an interruption brought to Bro- you by Maya. <laughs> brought to you by Maya. Thank say, you. Maybe if you close the door, she might not make it in. She's kicked out. We're denying her access as we finish. We've done pretty good yeah, so far without that. We did. We did a minor bear incident. Minor Maya incident. Meyer bear. Yeah. Meyer Mina. <laughs> Ma- Maya. Mina. Maya. That's, that's fine. We're coming same. to the end here, yeah. so we're good. <laughs> if yeah. you're still with us. Exactly. Well, I think that was that was pretty much it. I think we did a pretty yeah. good job. Of so looking that. back at everything, mm-hmm. what is going to be your favorite trend of the year? Oh. Or putting... something that you're really excited for? I'm excited for probably the like the specialty vendors entertainment portion yeah. because I think that's where people can really make it about things that they love outside of just the getting married portion yeah. of the day, which in itself, of course, is super important. That's what everyone's there for. But I think it just, like I said, gives people an option to make it more of them. It's an event. And their personalities. Yeah. And a lot of times people surround themselves with very much mind like like mind like people like minded like minded <laughs> Jesus like minded people. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, that's mine. I'm mean, gonna have to say specialty vendors. That would be mine. That and puffy sleeves. Like I just can't get over those damn sleeves. Oh, the puffier the better. Yes, the bigger the better. The more bows. I'm, I I want to see it all. I, I'm down for that. Yeah. I I agree. I think there's a lot here um that i definitely agree with honestly i don't really see there wasn't anything i saw that i was necessarily like meh about yeah um i think all of it is great moving forward i think in general what we're seeing is people really incorporating their like i said their own personalities their own likes and tastes into what it is that they're doing and make it really about them yeah it's definitely a year they of, want. of the couple right a year of less traditions just do what you want on your wedding day and how you envision it which i love 
Yeah, traditions are definitely more more or less without going too far. Maybe it's a little bit too far saying they're thrown out the window, but they're not as incorporated anymore. I think yeah. people are knowing that they have their permission to do what they want. I think that's what it should be. Do yeah. what you want, How you whatever that stay. looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that pretty much wraps up all of it. All of it. And I appreciate everyone. I hope that was easy for you guys to follow along with and that there's some like-minded people like-minded people <laughs> she's learned a new word today guys uh, oh my gosh <laughs> i would love to hear what you guys are excited to see this year or if there's something else that we did not cover that you have seen that's trending towards a, a trend for this year yeah whether you're a vendor or some, a couple who's getting married and you're incorporating something into your wedding day yeah. that you maybe got the idea from someone else and maybe it's like a trickle effect yep i want to hear it share it with us um send us an email comment on here anything you guys want i want to know what your thoughts are on trends this year and yeah that's it i didn't even finish my drink no but we will cheers to that this is a first (laughs) who am i they'll just burn on the way down (laughs) in the best way possible well cheers everybody thank you so much for listening we can't wait to hop back on here and by the way we are going to start having guests on where we're gonna we got some good guests coming up on the next couple episodes dive in excited dive into all the details and we can't wait to share it all with you cheers guys cheers we did it like-minded mind liked <laughs> damn it my mind is licked licked minded <sighs> there's that <laughs>